Hey everybody, what's happening? Uh, my name is Adam Scheuer. Want to do a little bit of an overview on how to use a super incredible resource that is free to everyone on this planet that has internet to use. So it's called PubMed. And I'm going to show you guys how I use it. And maybe you'll, maybe you'll enjoy it as well. Okay, first off, if you just go to your address bar and you went to www.pub med.gov simple as that p-u-b-m-e-d.gov hit enter it's going to take you right here that's the page that I'm on and you can see it says PubMed up here this is the, the US National Library of Medicine and what this is it's an incredible online database of tens maybe hundreds maybe millions of different published studies so let's check some things out and let's just start off with a real basic search and we're going to type in the word ulcerative colitis right we all know what that's all about then we hit the little search button right there and guess what this brings back 36,400 different results and you can see on the left hand side what I typically go to is I like to look for results where I have access or there's a better chance of having access to the entire study. Some of these reports and studies we actually don't have access to. Maybe we need to subscribe to one of the periodicals that published them to read the full thing. So anyways, I'm going to filter this with full free text. So now that's going to bring back, you can see here, 1 to 20 are listed on this page of you know, almost 7,000. So let's see, just to kind of pop through here. Inflammatory bowel disease in Hispanic communities, a concerned South American approach could identify the etiology of Crohn's disease in UC. Interesting, interesting, interesting. And you can see this is azathioprine. This is talking about frequency and associated factors of hair loss among patients with inflammatory bowel disease. And you know what? I got an email today from someone asking about this. So let's pop this thing open. We can see already this is from the World Journal of Gastroenterology. January 2015, this is a very recent study. If we click on that link, it's going to bring us up to the new page here. And this is going to give some very basic information about this study. For example, it talks about who the authors are. And if we click on this little drop down, this is coming from Baylor College of Medicine, Houston, Texas. The aim, this is going to be kind of a high-level overview of what's going on on this study, to identify the frequency of hair loss among patients with IBD and associated clinical and disease-related factors. Interesting. It talks about methods. We performed a cross-sectional study in a tertiary referral adult IBD clinic, and so forth, and then it gives the results. Below, it has a conclusion. So let's read the conclusion. Hair loss is common among patients with IBD. Mesalamine and anti-TNF medications were associated with lower odds of hair loss. Further studies are required to assess the mechanism of hair loss among patients with IBD. So, let's say we want to read the full study. You can click where it says free PMI, PMC article. And that, sure enough, is going to pull up this entire study. So this is from the World Journal of Gastroenterology. Here is some more of those doctor's names who were involved. If we click down author information, this is a little trick that I wanted to tell you guys about. Let's say you're like I am sometimes, and you want to actually contact the researchers, scientists, or doctors who actually participated in the study, and because you have an additional question. I hope all these doctors don't get angry if everyone starts messaging them, but I think they'll actually appreciate it, which is usually the response that I get. But for example, I'm looking for an email address, and does anybody see an email address? Well, there's this one right here. S-E-L-L-I-N at bcm.edu. And if you look up here, you can see, I'm guessing that's Mr. Joseph Sellen. So if you happen to have a question, Joseph Sellen is the MD Professor, Division of Gastroenterology, 1 Baylor Plaza, Houston, Texas. You can shoot him a message. It looks like you could even call a phone number here if you wanted. You might get an answer. But... If you look down here, this is going to be the details, the real guts of this study. And we're not going to go through on this video and read through this, but if you are interested in this particular topic, which I know many people are, 
feel free to go through and read this. This is 210 consecutive patients were recruited. <clears throat> excuse me. 60 patients were excluded from the analysis based on incomplete data or discrepancies in the survey, revol survey results and chart review. La -di -da. Demographics and inflammatory bowel disease characteristics. And it goes on. Hair loss. Medications associated. There's some pretty cool information here. And again, at the bottom, you'll see some comments, background, so forth. Um, some footnotes. And then there's a whole bunch of references. All right. Let's hit the back button. One more time. Nope. I might have hit it one too many times. So what do we do? Oh, sorry. We found it. We're back here. We're looking for some more articles that might be interesting. Differential diagnosis and in inflammatory bowel disease colitis. La -di -da -di -da. Let's say you want to find something on a different topic. And I don't know. What's something? Ulcerative colitis and mm, ulcerative colitis and fecal transplants. Type that in. Nothing popped up there. Let's try FMT. Okay, so now we got some different results. Looks like five results. Here's one from December 2004, fecal microbiota transplantation for gastrointestinal diseases. Uh, restoring the gut microbiome for the treatment of inflammatory bowel disease. Uh, anyways, the idea is type in whichever topics you're interested in. Um, there was a recent story on the website about UC or ulcerative colitis or maybe medications affecting the nervous system. So you can maybe type in something like Humira, nervous system. And we'll see if anything pops back. Adalumumab. It's kind of a, the tricky name for some of the medications like Humira, for example. A little bit of induced lupus erythematosus with central nervous system involvement in a patient with Crohn's disease. Anyways, that particular person might be interested in reading a story like that. All right, you guys. PubMed, again, pubmed.gov. That'll take you here. You can type in a search. You can search for any different type of medical issue or questions. If you have questions about surgery, you have questions about five ASA medications, questions about any of the medications, or questions about back pain. I mean, all types of things. You can find it here. So definitely make use of this. I think it's a um, it's an awesome resource. Hey, you guys. Let's do a quick recap. All right. To get to this resource, you're going to go to www.pubmed.com. .gov will get you there as well. And there's lots and lots of studies about UC waiting for you. And on many of them, there's contact info for the actual doctors or scientists who created the studies. You can email them and ask some questions. I do it all the time, and you should too. Make use of the resource. Educate yourself if you're interested or have questions about something related to UC. There's lots to learn, and there's lots of resources that are free to take advantage of. So I wish you all the very best in the coming months. Like always, remember, even though symptoms might seem like they're going to last forever, they don't. Things can, and they're going to get better for you, especially if you're struggling. Happy and healthy life for all of us is just around the corner, especially if symptoms are acting like they're never going to end. So you guys, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to share with other people. Hit the like button, write a comment, do whatever you like. It'll make me feel good, and hopefully you guys as well. I wish you all the best. Take care.